Meeting Chris, man. It's a pleasure, yep. bro. Seriously. Yeah, same here, bro. Same here. Indeed. Indeed. But, 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 dude, I don't think, I don't, I think, man, I think the last time we had rain here was like January, bro. Oh my God, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so, so everything. Doc, first. You <laughs> might want to pray. You <laughs> might, come on, Dr. Dre. You do. Hey, man. I need to be praying because you know it's really it's it's for real hot out here, man, and everything is just straight burning, man. It's, everything turned brown, bro. So I'm like, Jesus. You know, and and I I I hear the disparity in your voice. You understand? Bro, it's like... bro, you know, and it's crazy because you know the city the city is not really up at all entertainment wise right. at all. Right. So right. it's really kind of crazy to see the strip. Empty, almost. It's crazy. Yeah, you know, so imagine. between that, wow. between that, between that, and it being hot, I don't see how they do it, man. Like the people that be out on the strip this time of year, like when it is normal, they be out on the right. strip just chilling, man. And I'm like, man, God bless all of y'all, brother. Right, right. I ain't, I ain't going out. I, I'll, I'll see y'all at about nine o'clock. Right, I ain't coming out. Right. Well, thank you, gentlemen, I want to thank you both, man, for. Um, for taking part in these these this series, man, that I've been doing, you know, and um, yeah. like I said I didn't think it would be complete. I was like, I gotta get some of my um some of my favorite drummers on here, man. And um, right on, man. You know, it's a short list, but it's a, it's a list, and y'all tell it. <laughs> y'all tell it on it. <laughs> we know you, Reggie. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> Oops! Did wow. I say that? Did I say that live? I did. Right, you right, sure? Right. You, you sure we did say that live? <laughs> it is all good. Uh, but they know who they are. They know who, and they know who they're not. <laughs> so. uh -oh. oh man! <laughs> oh man! It's yeah, man. and all the all the bass players, they know. They know what I'm talking about, man. And that's part of what I wanted to get into, like that bass player drama relationship. So, you know, we, we'll, we'll dig right in, man. Yeah. Chris Coleman, man, golly, man. <laughs> let's, let's hear yeah. a little bit about, man, your beginnings first. Like, was drums your first instrument? Like, and how old were you? And, and what was that inspiration? Okay. Um, like most of us, man, we all started out in church. My grandfather was the pastor. He had 10 kids, 22 grandchildren. Woo. And yeah, six boys, six six girls, four boys. My dad is one of the twins, and um, my uncle was the drummer of the family. Although you know how it is in church, it's not um, where's the drummer. You know, it's somebody play the drums. You know <laughs> mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so mm -hmm. that was the vibe. You know, that's why everybody could play everything. You know, and back then, like my pop generation, they weren't trying to be like beast they were just like yo we need we need service to be quality you know that type of thing but it inspired us of course you know yeah so um starting out with that i used to sit on my uncle's knee you know he let me play the cymbals and i could barely reach the pedals that type of thing you know um that was basically from age one through 17 all the way up through high school um was that new york or no, that's just before New York, just oh. before New York, um, graduated high school. And then when I was 17, I went on tour with a gospel play. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I didn't know that. 
Yeah. <laughs> Something special is about to happen. We had uh, Cole um, from The Martin Show. Uh, we had wow. D.D. Haddon, Dietrich Haddon. Let me see. Uh, we had um, uh, William Murphy. Uh, we had a couple other cats, you know, a lot of local Detroit cats mainly. So wait, and you after that, and you still couldn't, and you still couldn't reach the foot pedals. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, we we was rocking at this point. You understand? Oh, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> I mean, you know, I, I was still knee high to a duck, as my grandfather would say. Wow. But uh, <laughs> but um, you know that that was all just before New York. You know, uh, I was a. Uh, shift manager at a gas station oh yeah let's see you know i hustled just like everybody else did trying to make a dollar man um Mm. you know playing top 40 in the clubs at night when you could you know that type of thing right um 1998 and um i was like man i I was skimming through um modern drummer magazine and i saw an ad on drummers collective and i freaked out i was like wait, they got just a specific drum school? Like, I didn't know it was like, you know, you know how it is, you coming from church, like, you green, man, that's all you got is right. <laughs> modern drummer is your connection, your, that was our worldwide web at the point, you know, at that point, you know. And, um, yeah, so, um, I followed up on the ad, and I got accepted right away, and for me, it was like, you know, a little kid in a small town coming from Saginaw, Michigan, going straight to the city. Dude, the first day we showed up, we come out of Port Authority and we trying to catch a cab to go to the hotel and the cab drivers are fighting each other. And my dad was like, I got to leave you in this. I was like, heck shit, let's go, baby. This is New York. <laughs> and my mom freaking out like, oh, my baby, you know, that type of stuff. So wow. that was like, this, that. yeah, that was the start of it for me. Uh, and then I guess so, obviously, you and I met, I always thought, I, I never forget that because I thought you were from New York even after you and I had known each other for a while. Yep. So, and I forgot exactly where, where did we actually meet? Like, do you remember the first time? Yeah, it was a concert. I want to say, I remember uh, Melvin Crisco was there. Um, I want to say it was something to do um, with Leon Lacey. But it was like, because I, I used to hang with Paul John. Me and Paul John was like two peas in the pot. You know, I used to stay over his house. We used to shed at the collective all the time. And... Of course, we heard about all of our big brothers, you know, the Nats and the Reggie Youngs and, you know, Jeff mm-hmm. Lowe and, and Gerald, you know, just all the whole New York City, right? So we went to, me and Paul went to this concert. He was playing for Leon. And I think that's how we met because you were in the back. And I was, everybody's like, yo, Reggie's here. I was like, wait, Reggie Young? Like the bass player? Like that guy <laughs> that was playing all the crazy licks? I was like, I was like, oh my God, it's about to go down. I was so happy to meet him. And Reg pulled a Reggie on me. He was just like, what's up, man? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, for me, it was like, wow, like he's so New York, you know? <laughs> but he's been the same ever since, you know what I'm saying? You've been 100 ever since, so you've been my brother since then, man. <laughs> uh, man. That's right, Paul John. I, I thought that's probably where... Um, you and I got connected to because that was a little scene, right? And that town's yeah. Least, Paul John and and, and um uh um uh Antoine. Yep, also, yep, Antoine Rodney, um and Willie Brown. <laughs> yes, that whole scene, bro. That that was the crew. Yeah. At least when I was there, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. Alan Plummer. Yeah, that was that was cool, man. And and it's funny because a lot of times we all talk about how you remember then, man, that's when sessions were happening like every oh, weekend. Yeah. Did you make a conscious effort to say, I'm not going to stay in church and play? I, I must further my education or my ears and my skills because I want to do more. And what happened was 
when I was in seventh grade, and I, I got to go back in the story a little bit. Uh, I used to, I'm part raised in Memphis. My mom is from Memphis. You know, shout out to all my family from Memphis, all the musician cats there. Um, so every summer, bro, I used to go to Memphis for the whole summer. So Memphis is part, really like home for me. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And I remember I went to uh, the music shop there one day. And you know how it is, you're a young cat from a different city. And, you know, the cast was like, oh, man, like, where you from? I'm like, oh, he from. And they couldn't pronounce Saginaw, so they just said Detroit. You know, oh, yeah, this is this, this a Detroit kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that type <laughs> of thing, right? So he was like, he was like, man, play some. So I was just playing in the store. And, you know, the little crowd come drawing around. They were like, oh, really cool, cool, cool. His name was Jonathan, this guy. He was like the only black employee there at the time. And he said, man, he said, bro, you, he said, I'm going to give you something. He said, I got something for you. I want to give you a gift. He said, you're a really cool young dude. He's like, you got, you know, you got a good spirit, man. I want to give you something. He's like, this thing really motivated me. I was like, really excited. Bro, he handed me a CD. I don't know. Dre, you may remember this. It's yeah. called uh, yeah. um, People Who Speak With Their Hands. It's the Zildjian compilation. Yeah, yeah. Back in the day. Yeah. Reg, you remember this, Reg? That was killing. That was killing. Yeah. Me. Had everybody yeah. on it. Steve Smith, Vinny, yes. Dennis. Yes. Like mm-hmm. the whole, I mean, all the, the cats who was who at that time, right? Yeah. So right. he gives me this CD, but he played it for me in the house. And the first record was 7th Avenue South with Dave ah, Weckler. Yes, sir. Bro, I stood in the <laughs> middle of the floor was like, what? And I had never heard drums. I had never heard a mix. I had never heard like horns and the arrangement of that tune alone. I was like, yeah. I, I was hungry from then on. I was like, I don't know yeah. what this is, but I got to have it, you know? So I just fell in love with all of that. And, and that world began to be opened up to me. You know, that's mm-hmm. it. I'm like searching and figuring out who's who. But I'm so grateful to God that I started out with that CD because we, the way we grew up, you know, especially in Detroit, I, I don't know if you can say the same thing about New York. I think so in, 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 in certain regards. But in Detroit, you know, growing up with my big brothers like Dana Davis, mm-hmm. um, Marvin McQuitty, Modoc, uh, let's see, I'm gonna I'm forget somebody. God darn it, it's so many cats. Let me just say Detroit. <laughs> but right. when you grew up, they didn't let you. It wasn't no vibe, bro. You couldn't vibe. You couldn't be in your own little clique in your own little sect. It was like Detroit was our hub, and everybody yeah. was like, everybody's great, so we all just gonna be human. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Nice. So. Mm-hmm. That that was for me. That's the way I remember it. And and for me, what happened was when I got that CD, I took that from the CD. So all of these different drummers, all of these different styles, I just fell in love with them. It wasn't like, oh, this is my favorite. I'm only hit with this dude, or I only swing with this dude. That's how it wasn't like I was like I was learning from everybody on that CD. So I'm super inspired. So from there, it like my ears were always open to everything. You know what I'm saying? And that's why I was so happy to go to New York City because I had the melting pot. You know, I left y'all at that concert and then I go back in the city and hear Afro Cuban Club. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. And that's the that was the beauty of New York, you know, that type of thing. So for me, it just felt natural. It just felt natural to trans transition into whatever was next for me. You feel me? Man, if all if it was all at the same time, man, I don't know how you did it. (laughs) <laughs> I, you know, and it's funny you say that because where I was, where I was from, the only thing that we could tap into to get CDs was Best Buy, mm-hmm. Target. Uh, yeah, I have a tower. Did y'all have a tower records out there? Nope. Wow. If it it might have been in Detroit at the time, but I mean, I'm in Saginaw, so it's like, you right. know. I'm like, I'm doing the best I can do with my little McDonald's money. <laughs> you, know, you know what I'm saying? So, and luckily, I was able to find a lot of Dave CDs first. I found, it, it was it, it, let me see, I found some stuff with Vinny, but then I had to get into the artists to figure out, like, the Dennis's and the Vinny's, because they were, you know, uh, they played more with other artists than being an artist themselves at the time. You know what I'm saying? So, but then there's that aspect, you know, the added God aspect to it, right? Mm-hmm. Respect God, you know, 
So you just learn to always respect your elders. The deacons, they were like my big my my uncles. You know what I'm saying? They helped raise me, they helped chastise me, that type of thing. So everybody that was older than me, I was like <laughs> by nature forced to respect them. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I, I was born and raised in it. So I, I approached that up in music and drums. It's like, yo, this dude's come before me. You know, even if I feel like I he can't, it's like, even if I'm not grabbing or absorbing a lot of what he has to offer, he I can learn something from him. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. At least what to do and what not to do. Right. Right. <laughs> you know, but at the same time, I think it's just, I just think it speaks a lot to how you value your future when you can respect others that have come before you. That's an amazing statement, bro. Um, mm -hmm. um, more, you on some records I didn't even know you were on. I heard you mention William Murphy earlier. Uh, you recorded with him? Yeah, <laughs> unique situation with that. Every once in a while, and, and I don't look at this as a negative, I look at it as, as, a, as a learning tool. We got called to do that session. And it was in Atlanta. It was at Bishop uh, Eddie Long's church. Okay. And I was on the first draft. Apparently, they had some sound issues, some technical issues. I was told that. But also, I learned the value of not rushing a session. Mm. You know, making sure that absolutely everybody knows clear cut. You know, what does the Bible say? Write the vision, make it plain. And we were struggling the night before, still getting parts. Wow. <laughs> you know, wow. as a band. And you could tell it was just this tension, you know. And, I, and I'm not calling anybody out because I feel like it's a life lesson for all of us. You know, I'm, I'm still cool with everybody involved at that moment. But that session ended up getting overdubs mm -hmm. because it was just like, the vocals, the, the arrangements were wrong. We got vocal bleed and the drum mics. It's like, we got to do this over. I've, I've had to redo live sessions like that. Yeah. So I get wow. it why we got we got overdub. So I, I did the original. I, I think I'm on the DVD. And if you listen to the record, there is parts of when I come in or when our band comes in <laughs> versus what they did in the studio. Yeah. But it is what it is, you know? So... Um, I, you know me, I don't, you know, Rez, I'm gonna tell the truth. I ain't so, gonna, yeah, I, what about this Shaka Khan record? Yes, that one, let's see, we recorded that live in Malibu, February 7th, 2007. And that record is out. Uh, I think it's called like an intimate night with Shaka Khan, but also you can catch the whole show on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. The live, the yeah. live taping, yeah. Were you on her phone um, on this project? Yep, funk this. I'm I'm doing the medley. Man, what was that like? Was she in the studio with you? Yeah, she was there. That was uh, if I'm not mistaken, Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis at the time. Um, yeah, they they got a hold to it, you know, and uh, it was me, Gooch. It was me, Gooch, and the squad. But it was like it was fun, man, because we just, you know, when you gonna redo Shaka stuff, it's like how can you redo it? Just go in there and lay it down. <laughs> You know, just go in there and just bring the soul because Shaka herself can sell it. You know, the music has already been sold. It's like it's not so much we can do to it, you know. And so we really we really was like, yo, let's try to be as authentic as possible, you know. Right. And I'm I'm grateful as a band we we took that approach because they ended up keeping it, you know. You did it right. Oh. Gerald Albright. Yep. Gerald Albright. Um, I think I did two on I'm on I might be on two different records. Cause he called me early on when we first did this jazz festival around 2013 or 14. I think he called me for a session then. I think that went to him. And then it was recently, like I wanna say 2017, 18 on his one of his newest records. I'm also on that one too. Yeah. Lee Rettenau, what was that like? Oh yeah. <laughs> I yeah, I recorded and toured with him. That was crazy because with Lee, I had many different aspects. There was one band where it was me, him, uh, Melvin Davis, and John Beasley. There was another one where it was uh 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 what's my guy's name? Oh, uh the legends. I did the legend tour. It was me, Abraham Laborio, um, 
and Dave Grusin and Lee and, and Lee. And we toured Asia. And then there was one band with um uh me, Tom Kennedy, and Lee, and it wasn't Beasley. I'm trying to think who else was on keys at that time. Ah, it might be the Spanish guy I'm thinking. I can't think his name right now. Yeah, that, that was a crazy run with, with Lee for about two or three years. With Tom Kennedy. No wonder why you – Oh, yeah. I, didn't, I hadn't talked to you in about three years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, see, you see how the family do you, Dre? <laughs> bro, I'm learning. <laughs> Some, <laughs> you know, like, like I mean, and Dre, you know this too, man. Like, what I'm gonna say is, cause I started on drums, right? And um, yeah, okay, I don't know if I would ever got to that level. Who knows? Like, right? But whatever. But the average person, man. I mean, you you had them counting, <laughs> right? But the average person, man, would never be able to. I mean, like your average drummer. That's I mean, I mean, like when I say average drummer, I mean even drummer. I mean, that's drum good. That could play. They good. They can't do that. Yeah. So, like, <laughs> what, is it, what does it take to get to that that level, man? Like, how do you get there? Ah, uh, at the end of the day, Reg, it's determination, man. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and here's the thing. I learned something very early in life. Um, I did a gig. I'll never forget this. I don't really tell a lot of people this because, you know, I don't want people to get the wrong impression. But I remember on a Wednesday night, I did a Bible study. And the way our church, the church that I was playing at, you know, the way we worked, I got my check. You know, it was like two services on Sunday morning and one service on Wednesday night, right? And a rehearsal yeah. on Thursday, but it's a small town, so... $175, $200 for the whole week. That was huge for me, 16, 17 years old, right? So, I'm, and I'm glad I, I got this lesson early. That was a Wednesday. I got a phone call early Thursday morning about 9.30. Yo, yo, yo. Um, You can read music, right? I said, uh, I mean, yeah, you know, I can write it out. Like, you know, man, our drummer didn't show up and we got to start this session today in the studio. And I said, okay, I, I knew the bass player who called me. It's just some straight up old, you know, like straight ahead classic 
80s, 90s rock, right? And he said, man, just come. We got the gear here. You use this. And he said, hey, man, you know, we'll pay you 350 for the whole day. You know, whatever we, we need. We'll just use you for today, right? And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> that was Thursday. I get, I happened to go to the music store on a Friday. It was about 1 p.m. And I met some homies up there. And they was like, yo, uh, we got these cats coming up from Flint. You know, Flint, Michigan, this jazz band, right? They coming up and they, you know, they want to do this and want to do that. They want to have like a little get together tonight. And uh, I'm like, cool, I'll be there. So I gave him my next tail. You know, we all had next tails, chirp, chirp, oh, you know man. what I'm saying? <laughs> so they chirped me about 7 p.m. And they were like, yo, do you know uh, these three tunes from this, uh, this artist? Again, guess what? The drummer doesn't show up. I'm like, uh, yeah, okay, so can you come early and play? He's like, bro, we'll give you a hundred dollars just for the, these three songs. We, but I was told like you the guy, the last minute guy to call to figure this stuff out because it was like some seven eight, it was this and this that and that, right? And I'm like, okay, yeah. So do the math with me so far. One fifty. Three fifty. Three fifty. One hundred. Where we at? <laughs> That's fine. Right. All right. So Saturday, I'm hanging out. And uh, I'm like, I'm going to go to the mall like we always used to do. You know, kids, you know, your kids, you get your little outfit together, little polo matching, your little, you know, khakis, your dickies, right? <laughs> That's how we rock it in, in Michigan. <laughs> and um, I go on the west side, and my guy is like, yo, man, um, I, I went to, uh, 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 um, I'm in the mall, and I'm buying some Nikes. I'm like, yo, I got a little cheddar. I'm going to buy some new shoes, right? I needed some new shoes. The Jordans had just come out. So I'm like, man, I earned this. <laughs> so I'm in there and I'm talking to my guy, right? So he's like, hey, hey, how you doing? How you doing this, that, that? He said, wait a minute, are you a drummer? He's like, oh, wait, your name's Chris Coleman, right? Blah, blah, blah. We get on. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, bro, I heard about you, man. You're like, you got like wicked chops, man. Oh, man. He's like, dude. You know, he said, do you ever play metal music? And I said, um, I said, ah, I mean, I can. It just depends on what it is. He's like, bro, dude, you got to come play in this group, in this band tonight, man. Like, I mean, it's not like really paying a lot, but dude, you could just come and thrash, man. Just let loose, right? I was like, cool. <laughs> I was like, yeah, let's go. I said, no, whatever, let's go. I said, any, you know, music I should think about or know ahead of time? He's like, can you play double bass? I was like. Yes, I can. <laughs> so I'm like, cool. So I go, dude, I didn't really know the songs, but they was high and drunk, so it didn't matter. We just in there <laughs> thrashing, bro. Bro, they turn around and give me a $100 bill. They basically wow. paid for my Jordans. Wow. And guess what? That was like Saturday, right? Here it is Sunday morning. I'm right back in church. And I'm like, I'm sitting in church, and I'm like, and the pastor starts talking about, you know what? He's like, some of y'all can't be blessed until you open up your mind. You got to be able to have three and four streams of income. And I was like, mm -hmm. I just lived this this week. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> and I'm mm -hmm. like, I can buy Jordans. I can buy new symbols. I can buy whatever. And I'm like, I'm like, okay, so music is music, bro. You yeah. feel me? Yeah. So for yeah. me, I, I, sell, I tell this story to say, the sky is the limit, man. You are the only person that's going to ever hold you back as a, mm -hmm. as a musician. We are our mm -hmm. own roadblocks. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because we try to fit in or be cool or we want a bunch of likes or we want to be accepted by different circles. I'm like, man, I want to be accepted by my wife and kids. Right. right. <laughs> you know right. what I'm saying? I want to be accepted by them so they can say, yo, daddy provided for us. That's all he did was swing sticks and he put you through college? Yes. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> it's possible. Indeed. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, man. So that's that's my take on that, man.
know you got some things that, that you got to do and, and you want to get into, man. But I, I really appreciate you coming on really quick, man, and sharing with us all of these stories, man. And, you know, I, I appreciate it, bro. Yeah, man. Man, love to you, man. I appreciate you, bro. For real. Like, it's, it's one thing to be a legend, but it's still... It's another thing to be human and still relevant. So, man, I mean, you know, I love you like my brother because you are, but it's like kudos to you, man, for, for continue to push forward. And, you know, I love your bass. I love your sound. Congratulations with the Federa situation. Like, dude, like you, you still the Reggie Young, bro. Oh, man, man love you, brother. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> I appreciate that. I want to I wanna play one thing and see if you remember this. Um, I'm sure you will. And uh, before I let you go, I don't know if, uh, uh, if, if, if Bishop Arcel Vickers is listening or not, but. Oh. <laughs> okay.
Hallelujah. 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 All right. Hallelujah. 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 Back, and like everybody listen, that, that what was that like twelve years ago or more? Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. That was um I wanna say was it it was it two thousand nine or like two thousand fourteen? No, yeah. no, no. It well, yeah, it had to be like because you were at the collective. You like you was like the right. head the head professor at Drummond's Collective. <laughs> I, I actually took over the gospel class because Nat got busy. Nat was teaching the gospel class, but then I just took it over because he got busy. But I had two stretches. It was like 2009 and 10, I was there. I had to take a brief a break because of tour. And then I kind of went back in like 2013, 14, somewhere around there. So I believe it might have been, it might have been 2009. Yeah, yeah, and you call me in to to help the students with their final exams or something. They had to like play yeah, yeah. With, a, with a gospel band, and yeah, those was, those were incredible. Those were incredible, man. Like, you know, give everybody my love, man. Your family and all, man. I wish you every, you know, all the best, man. We'll be in touch. For sure, for sure. All right, brother. appreciate you, man. You too, Dre. Yo, I'm gonna okay. um, I'm gonna get your info through Dredge, and we gonna we gonna keep in touch, bro. I'm gonna hit you up. Yeah, we gotta man. talk. Absolutely. We, we definitely do, man. For sure. Okay, I hate to skip out, man. I got, a, I got another. Do your thing, brother. Man, I, I, I would love to. I could, I could watch this later, right? Because I definitely want to yeah. hear Dre's part as well. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Okay, for sure, yeah, man. I'm definitely gonna check it out, man. Much love to for both sure. of y'all, man. Indeed, my man. Pleasure. All right. All right, man. All right, I'll see y'all. <laughs> All right. Peace out. <laughs> That's my man, Chris <laughs> Coleman. So, Good Dre, man. man, like a lot of people are very, very unaware, a lot, especially my <laughs> people. A lot of people know you, but then there's a lot of yeah. people on the other side that don't. Um, Indeed. Yeah, Dre Energy. This dude, yeah, man. Phenomenal. Yeah. For those that don't know, this dude, oh my gosh. Phenomenal. <laughs> His precision, you, and he's, he's, man, I, let's see, <laughs> oh, man, I, you know, I can say oh, man. Uh, a whole lot, but <laughs> I want to play this little thing right here, man. Um, uh -oh. Uh -oh. It's, there's a lot of stuff on you, but I really want you to talk because you have an amazing story. Of, of, yeah, man. Um, yeah, so, but, yeah, it's, man. Yeah, man. It's crazy. Tell me nothing. Don't tell me nothing. No, I'm straight, I'm straight up. I downloaded that track right before I did that clinic. I had never really played through. I, I didn't play through it at all, technically. Yeah. Um, but I had downloaded that track because I mean, I did. You know, we did the song back in my home church. You know, when, when I was uh, coming up. So, uh, you know, so I knew the song. I didn't know technically all the arrangement of that. But it was fun, man. It was fun. It was definitely fun. Man, you played it like you wrote it. Man, I know, bro. <laughs> you know, I was like, man, I said all these clubs, man, all this stuff, man. I, I said I should have been a little bit more prepared, but it was definitely fun to do the to do the song because it, the song already has its own move anyway. Yeah. You know, so it was it was really, really cool to do, man, for sure. Yeah. So listen, yeah. Man, so Full, your, your first and last name, Andre Boyd, right? Indeed. Right? Your, your stage name being Dre Energy. Um, cause yeah. You are, full of, and you are a joy <laughs> to watch play, man. You are Thank so, you, man. super tight. Um, uh, uh, tell people, okay, where are you from, man? Let's, 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 let's a lot of I'm, uh, I'm originally from um, St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, okay. Ferguson, that whole area. Um, but St. Louis, Missouri, 
is my hometown, you know, and that's where I cut my teeth and, and, and got a lot of, of uh, the training on, on what I do today. Mm-hmm. Um, by a lot of a lot of the great drummers, you know, uh, that, that has come out of that city as well. Okay, like who? Mm-hmm. Um, drummers like Dave Wuckle, mm. you know, uh, Jeremy Haynes, mm-hmm. uh, Terry on Gully, uh, Marcus Baylor, Mark Kohlenberg, mm-hmm. um, Emmanuel Harrell. Um, man, I can keep going. Tuffy, mm-hmm. so many guys, man, that has come out of Dre, this and city. It, yeah. Yeah, when did when did you start playing drums, man? I started playing at two, man. What? I started playing at two. My old, yeah, I started playing at two years old. My older brother is a drummer. My older brother actually used to play the New York scene. He used to live in New York for some years and play the Cafe Waz and the Village Underground and did all of that stuff, man. So, um, so yeah, you know, so I I had a I had a professional, you know, to look to, you know, to try to, you know, definitely you know, engage more in my career for later, you know. And and did you, did you, uh, did your parents play or sing or? You know, my mom sings, but no, man, it's just technically me and my brother as the musicians. Right. You know, and uh, for me, uh, I always say it that, you know, I didn't choose music, music chose me. Yeah. You know, and, and it was one of those things of really wanting to uh, hone in and, really in love. I, I, the thing is, you know, all the chops and all this stuff is cool, but I'm really in love with music though, man. I'm really in love with the whole art of music. Seriously. Yeah. Yeah. You could tell. Mm-hmm. I could tell, man. We're like, yeah. when I watch you play, you know, but you know, I, I don't want to, I mean, you know, we've had the pleasure of working together. Right. We still work together. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I was floored by discovering you um yeah just through ig and i think i literally yeah. sent you a message <clears throat> some years she did and just said, did. man why who are you why don't i know you <laughs> <laughs> i think that's how i said it man like it was like <laughs> i was like you know, what in the world man so, it, it was crazy it was crazy you know for I, I think a lot of people are starting to get into the know yeah. of me more so but you know for for six and a half years i was on a world tour Exactly. touring 330 exactly. days out of the year man yeah, exactly so before we go there and that's and that's what i want to talk about and that's part of what this show um kind of is about right there's mm-hmm. there's the in your face names that you really know because there's yeah. a lot of the main i i wouldn't even want to use the word mainstream because what you were doing was mainstream too there are different <laughs> there are a whole bunch of highways in the country it is i agree the, there's a whole bunch of art, main highway arteries, man, that can get you to a lot of places that you've never been before. But there's yes. places that are well populated. Then there's some places that are even undiscovered. But let's go back a little bit to when you were. Did you play in church? I did, man. I played in church. Like I said, I was I was two years old playing in church, and later on, um, my uh, my mother became a pastor. And I became the organist at the church. You were the so organist? I, I was, man. You know, was the organist. I had perfect pitch. And um, that's what I think really helped me with, you know, being able to play organ quickly. Right. But, uh, yeah, man, for some years before the whole circ thing, I was at the church playing, man. Wow, this is starting to explain a lot, man, because uh, <laughs> boy, Arcel Vickers is going to love hearing this even more because um, – He's he's a drummer in heart too, and he's a nasty mm-hmm. keyboardist. You know that's who was. Yeah, you know, he's just he's amazing. He sounded um, amazing on the clip. Oh man, he he just gave you a great compliment on that um sample that sample track that I just uh, played um opening track. Thank he, you. he always does yeah. like this man. It gotta be like this man. It gotta be indeed like hand fitting in the club. And I've indeed. Never, I'm gonna tell you, I know, you know, again, I have a lot of favorite drum, a, a short list of favorite drummers. I have a lot of good drummers that mm-hmm. I can play with. Um, but man, drummers that can play with a click as if the as if the click is following you. That's next level. <laughs> no, seriously. You, you amazing <laughs> the stuff that you do with, with a click track. You like it's almost like you got nerve to do that, bro, with a click track playing, man. Like man, like you ain't you know, <laughs> No, you know, and it's crazy, man, because, you know, I, I had to learn how to make the click my friend because the click wasn't always my friend. Right. You know, but coming up in the city, 
where timing is everything. You know, one of my favorite drummers that I grew up listening to is one of the greatest time guys. He can he can flip time. He can he he doesn't speed up. He don't slow down. And so that was one of the the, the things that I had to look or guys I had to look to in order to be able to uh, play. Now, one thing I when I was I did a gig with someone. And they were saying, hey, man, you know, once you start to work with that click and it starts to get in, in you, man, you'll, you'll, you won't even think that it's on. You know, you won't even trip off it being on. And, and it, got, it got like that for me, you know. But, you know, six years of working with a click, almost 10 to 11 hours a day, you, you, you just start to, it's just start to be the thing for it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, yeah. yeah. So let's talk a little bit about that. Let's talk a little bit about your, um, you told me this story, man, and it's a beautiful, I, I, I remember how, how you told it to me verbatim, man. So how you mm. transitioned and, and how God blessed you to get on that gig, man, like that time of your life yeah. and everything. Tell it. Yeah. So I was, I was man, I was, shoot. Uh, my wife and I, we were, uh, we had gotten the, uh, I got a notification that Cirque du Soleil was doing auditions. And so, you know, I did an audition. I didn't think nothing was going to come out of it, but I just took a, um, a shot in the dark. And so uh, I did my audition, man, honestly, in my basement with a razor phone, bro. There was nothing spectacular. There was no crazy angles. There was no crazy mixes. I did that. And as soon as I did that, they hit me back and requested that I come in t uh, to do a uh, audition mm -hmm. in uh, New York City. And so uh, I'm like, man, I ain't got no money. I can't, you know, <laughs> I, I, you know how am I supposed to do this? So uh, I put my bank account in the negative, like 500 bucks for plane tickets. Wow. And I got to New York, man. And I got to New York three days before it was time for the, uh, for the, uh, actual audition mm -hmm. and I didn't have no cash. I had, I had, I had $65 to my name. So me and my wife were sharing $65 in New York city. I didn't have a hotel room, man. My hotel was LaGuardia airport. It was crazy, man. Uh, some of the stuff you see at LaGuardia <laughs> at night, <laughs> it's truck bad, dude. It was crazy. But we walked around with these luggages for three, that three whole days, man. And, Wow. You know, by the time I got to the audition, man, um, it was at, uh, uh, what's the name of the rehearsal hall? Um, SIR? SIR. And so I went to SIR, and I, I showed up two hours early, man, because I was just exhaust, exhausted. I had walked around New York literally for three days straight. Wow. And so uh, one, thing, one thing I have to say is that uh, people back in the day would paint a picture that New York City was this big, ugly city and people are so rude. But I have to say, I had the most help from the people that live in New York, man, that didn't know me, that, that knew I wasn't from there and uh, extended their hand to help me get to where I needed to go. So yeah, I, I big up to you guys for that, man. So, you know, so I went, I went to the audition and I was tired, man. I went, I went and played and, and did my thing and, after, you know, I was like the last audition for the three days that they were there. And the guy was like, man, you, you're the best audition we had in three days. Wow. You know, and so we appreciate that, you know, and he said, cool, you know, you're on the list. You know, the first first sh uh, show that comes up, you know, we, we're going to hit you up. Um, some people get on that list and they've been on the list for like 10 years. Mm -hmm. I think I was on that list for no more than about five or six months. And after that, I was, I was actually, I was actually, when I got the call to come do Cirque, I was on a gig uh, in Europe. I was doing uh, uh, this gospel, you know, the, the, the gospel uh, groups that go over to oh, these different right. countries around Christmas time. Right, right. And so, and that was my first, you know, out of the country gig. And I did the Golden Gospel Singers. So I did that and uh, I got in, in the midst of me being out there, I got the call to come play uh, Sir Soleil Kidam. And uh, it was amazing. I want to say this though, because uh, I, want, I, I, want, I want the young musician 
or whomever to know this part of the story is just as big as the struggle. So I, I, I got, I got the, uh, the study materials, which was something like 30, 30 DVDs. I got hired a year before it was time for me to leave. And so 30 DVD, 30 different show versions. Yeah. And so, you know, the crazy part of it is, man, I did not study those DVDs until it was like a week before for me to leave. Wow. And I did not do, I was caught up on the whole hype that I got the gig (laughs) and all of that. And so I went out there and, you know, it just kind of show you how things can turn around. I was, my music director was five seconds from sending me, for sending me totally back home because I didn't know any of the stuff. So we was in Montreal, man. I went and locked myself inside of my hotel room for four days straight, literally learning this, learning this music. Uh, you know, I would get up at six in the morning. I think I would end at about midnight just to make sure I had all of this stuff. And uh, when is my time to come play? You know, it, it was good. The, the thing is, with that, with the show, that's a big train, man. That's that's a big, that's a big responsibility, mm-hmm. you know. Especially with the drum, because I have to drive everything, and I got to catch these hits. I got to catch the, the kicks, and and mm-hmm. and and a lot of my chops and licks are cues for the lights and sound and the different things like that. There's a lot mm-hmm. to do. So, um, but I, I said all that to say that I was the worst musician when I I I I, I got there, but I ended up becoming one of the best drummers he had ever had on the show. Period. Wow. Wow. And and I was grateful, you know, but it, it took me a it took me a minute to get into the groove of, of playing the show and 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 one of the cool things is that we had a uh, we had a, a thing called playback where you can actually watch different shows and listen to yourself and listen to what you you know what sounded good, what didn't sound good. So I learned, you know, how to kind of construct my plan a little bit. Uh, with just being able to watch my playback, you know, and so I was able to kind of chisel out all the crazy stuff that didn't need to be played versus the stuff that needed to be played. And a lot of it uh, became more so the simplicity of playing was much more better than to give you the big crazy chop that just really didn't matter to the music. Yeah. And this is this yeah. is literally you during one of the shows, man, um, a, a little bit of it. Okay. We got it. Oh, 
That's what I mean. That is what I mean. But yeah, I don't know. It's like the click is following you, bro. And it bro. makes sense, like you said, when you you get to a point where you you've worked on it so much, man, where you're not paying yeah. attention to it no more. You don't. You oh know. man, I, I I I literally start to tune it out, you know, and, I, and to the point where my my headphone mix was like at I don't know. One, <laughs> I wasn't really paying. I wanted to hear. I wanted to hear my drums more so, the quality of my drums more so than hearing that click and everything else, man. But you yeah. know, but th those moments like that taught me a lot, man. It taught it taught me that I don't have to play every break. I don't have there's space. You know, I don't have to do a role when it comes to coming to a break. You know, right. I don't have to always do a role. You can you can kind of space that stuff out and just. Oh yeah, simplify it. You you definitely play off of space, which is which is great, man. And like you yeah. use space to your advantage. You use air even in your groove. It sounds like you're playing off of air. I, I do that sometimes, man. When I'm playing, and you do. It's hard to really articulate that, but it's it's like no, I get it. I get yeah. it. I get it. Yeah, I get it. You oh man, and and yeah, man. That's um, you're thinking arrangement. Um, so mm -hmm. yeah, like sometimes, you know, a lot of people would have a tendency, okay, there's a line coming up to, to, to accent on a break and right. a lot of people would just jump on the line, but right. it's like sometimes you go, why can't I let the line play itself, play itself. <laughs> and then I, yeah. I give the line an exclamation point. Yes. Yes. And that's so much, most times, especially when we're doing a show. There's so much more bigger uh, than anything, you know, and to 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 be able to lock in, and and I, I like to say play pocket links is is so is so much more greater than to you know overly play and you know when I first got the circuit I was overly playing man and I was you know I had to I had to reteach myself how to play drums and I'm being honest because I was I was overplaying. Uh, my hands were bleeding at the end of the uh, week. I could barely grip anything. Wow! You know, it was all bad, bad technique. So I had to learn how to conserve, you know, for the rest of the week, the rest of the, you know, because we did like eight to 10 shows a week. So eight to 10 shows a week plus sound checks. Right. My hands was like done when I first got out there, man. So I had to really, really teach myself to, you know, conserve. And, and a part of that was being able to give uh, space in the music, you know? Eight to 10 shows a week is crazy. And that's a theatrical show. So are we talking two, three hours? 
we it, our show was two and a half hours and i was on the we we had an intermission but i was on the stage the whole entire show there was only one song i didn't play out of the whole entire show and that was it but the cool thing is you know uh I was grateful for the position. I was grateful for the job. And that's six and a half years. I never missed a show. And you've you've been in places, man, that uh, you know, we've talked, man. Like just name yeah, some the, name some of the places you've been, man. Okay. Well, some of the places I've been and been able to do cool clinics. Like I, yeah, I didn't, get to that. I didn't get to that yet, but yeah. <laughs> but yeah tell you it. know, Tel Aviv, Estonia, uh, all over Canada, Kamloops, uh, Belgium. Uh, Belgium, oh man, uh, uh, London. We, we did seven weeks at Royal Albert Hall, man. Um, where else? Uh, uh, man, I'm drawing a blank now. Seoul, South Korea. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This was yeah, a, yeah. People, uh, some people probably like, what show was that? This was a world, this was a show that rich people go to. Let's put it that way. I mean, <laughs> so, that's why we don't know. We go to, we go to the, the Soul Circus. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Mike goes hey, was, to the brothers. <laughs> right, Mike. No, it was good, man. It was definitely yeah. good. I, as much as I could get my people out to come and see the shows, you know, I was confident my butt off, man. It was crazy. Yeah, let's check this out. Yeah. More of it. Some You bring it back crazy memories. No, that, I, I mean, you know it's crazy, man, because I've been gone. The show ended almost five years ago. And, you know, and it's still bringing back memories of listening. And, you know, and, and, and recently, you know, I was compelled to post some of the stuff because of uh, Cirque du Soleil going into bankruptcy and, mm -hmm. you know, all of that stuff. But, man, it's, it's crazy. I like if I had to go play the show today, I could play it like with no problem. Like, seriously. Your drum tuning is crazy. Man, I appreciate it, bro. I really, I I really try my hardest to tune. I, and even still now, man, you know, that's something that I still try to work on to try to get good even tones to make sure the drums sound decent. But I can't take the credit for all. You know, my sound guys were amazing with making sure my drums sounded really good in the mix. How do you, but do you, do you pick your notes for each, um, each time, the tension that you want them in, your tones for each time, or, or do? No, man. That's, what kid is that? I might have missed it. You might have said it. Well, back in the day, I used to endorse a little company called Dixon, and uh, they made me a custom kit uh, for the show, and it was a uh, uh, Babinga and Maple Hybrid. And so, uh, Mbinga for the low end, Maple for the high end. And, and it was great. It was a great sounding kit. So I used that then. And, uh, yeah, it's still set up, man. It's still, everything is still bolted to the floor of the case. And it, it literally, man, I could like roll it out and go play gig right now <laughs> and have no problems. Let's talk a bit, a little bit about your technique, man, with your, your hands, your hands. Are, yeah. Um, um, you do. You just have this touch, man. You're very fast, you're very quick. Um, you're very precise. Your precision is incredible. 
How did you develop that? Was it through practice traditional rudiments or did it kind of come natural? Is it, is it in your wrist? Is it in your fingers? It, like, it might be, it might be in my wrist. Uh, but I, I, you know, I used to, man, I used to practice for decades and for a long time on just uh, like a mattress and pillows and rugs, you know, so that really helped uh, me not being able to get any rebound really helped me gain speed. And, you know, back then I was a kid. I didn't know what I was doing. You know, I just thought it was something, you know, I, I thought it was just because I didn't have no drums yet that I was, you know, doing it like that. You know, um, you know, I, I remember uh, when my brother used to leave, I used to go and he used to have a, a drum set set up in his room. So I remember when he used to leave, I used to go downstairs and get his uh, cymbals. And when I knew he was going to be gone for a whole day, and set up his set up his drums and play, man. It just, you know, like before I had to go out to school in the morning, uh, like at eight o'clock in the morning, I was playing. Um, uh, uh, what's the song by Hezekiah Walker? Let the redeem. Okay. Early <laughs> eight o'clock, man. Getting it in. Wow. You know, my uncle came up like, man, what is your problem, man? It's eight o'clock in the morning. <laughs> you know, but I was just in love with playing, man. I was just in love with the gift, man, that God had given me you know and, and and i felt as if nothing or no situation at that point could 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 uh um, separate me from from the gift you right. know right yeah it's you definitely know. a gift man you're you are a technician man i've seen you in situations man even when you man. like you in the middle of a show and sticks are breaking man and you just flinging the sticks behind you <laughs> in, in the middle of doing some crazy like really really technical stuff and I'm like wow like I mean, Dude. it happens to drummers all the time, but just kind of like the way you had it set up, it, like, and, and the, the <laughs> phrase, man. So a lot of your off the snare work, man, is is, is insane, right? Like, um, yeah. there's, again, there, people, there's tons of stuff on Dre Energy on, on follow him, on, follow him on Instagram. He's always yeah, posting man. nice little 10 second, 30 second lessons for y'all, man. Like, <laughs> get that slow down app and slow it down and see what he's doing but <laughs> you yeah. know what you know it's crazy because uh, you know i've been getting backlash from po uh, posting the four the four to seven uh second clips you know because of, you know, yeah. you know yeah. like, hey man i want to see the whole thing i'm like i get it you know but you know what i uh, do how you like to promote some people will do four or five minute songs and then mm -hmm. you know but it's like the more you give the more they want. So it's like, it'll never be them. You know what I'm saying? So what you're doing is fine. And like, learn that and then we'll move. Bro, I, I mean, and the thing is when I do the analytics on how long people watch the longer videos, nobody really watches past 10 seconds. Right. It's just where right. it is. Right. So, you know, so I just kind of hit right. you and then you get it and that's it. Right, right. But here's, here's another yeah. example, man, of, of your hands and your technique, bro. Uh oh. Yeah. Let's see what we got. Then you go back to to some dynamics and uh, you 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 doing these classes, man all over the world. Did that yeah, opportunity man. come from the connections you made when you were traveling? 
the, it, it did, and and it's, it spilled over into still being able to do it. Like, you know, I still got a uh, lot of the guys in China calling and saying, hey, man, you ready to come back? Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> How about no? <laughs> yeah, they love you in Not China, right now. man. Like, yeah, yeah, man. Yeah. It, and, you know, China's my biggest market, man. So, you know, I got a, you know, what a lot of people don't know is I got a lot of products in right. my name right. that's selling in China, you know, with the... Talk about some of those products. What are they? So the drum shoe, the mm -hmm. signature drum shoe is selling in China. Uh, the signature drum pad, we're on the fourth or fifth time. Uh, and most recently, I have my signature symbols now in China, uh, which is, I'm happy. I'm very, very happy about that, uh, being able to go over to China, because China is a huge market for drummers, you know, there's drum schools everywhere and they really go far out for drum schools. They run a, like a section of the ball out and each floor there's, there's, there's a, there's a, a another section of the drum school. So a lot mm -hmm. of now, mm -hmm. ironically, when you were with the cert, that, that production, I don't even want to use the word circus. That was a theatrical, that's a theatrical monster, but that's just yeah. the name, what they called it. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Was now I see a band, was it more like keyboard players and you, or was no. it guitar and bass as well? And there was no bass. Uh, my 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 MD played key bass. Okay. Um, uh, we had uh, he and he played regular keys, and we had a he had a we had backup keys, and he he kind of doubled on keys and sax, and then on the other side of the stage was violin, cello. Uh, guitar and vocals. Okay. We learned each other's nuances. And he told me when I first started that, you know, he's the MD, but he needed me to drive the band, yeah, period. And, and you are, you were. <laughs> yeah, you're right. And so at first I didn't know, you know, I was, I was, I was, I was, I was traveling alongside the band, you know, but, you know, at some point, yeah, you know, he needed me to, to, to drive the band and kind of, make sure the band um, could feed off the energy, you know, to make sure that, the, that no matter what, every night that the band, that the energy all, always stayed to the highest degree. And that's what we did, man. Kind of put my personality in the show without stepping on everybody's toes. Mm -hmm. I learned how to be noticeable without having to be in the front, mm -hmm. you know? So it was, it was a cool, it was a cool thing, man. Um, I don't, I don't take any of the experiences for granted. It, was, it wasn't the most easiest job. Uh, and I have to be honest, uh, physically and socially, it wasn't the most easiest situation. But I, I was able to kind of overcome some things and make some things work for me, I guess you could say. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But it wasn't, e trust me, when I tell you, it was not easy especially when you when you out that long and you still have a wife at home it was not easy bro yeah that had to be hard In six years it was very hard right bro it was hard I mean, she came out she came out to more more so the better cities you know the, you know we was in hawaii for like four weeks or something like that and london and stuff like that but yeah it still was a lot of wear and tear on the situation you know because when i get off a tour you know, and still to this day, we, you know, we, we, we have to learn how to live with each other again because of, you know, the, the constant separation. Uh, last year, was it last year this time? It was either last year this time. It might have been last year this time. But, dude, I did, um, I went on tour, like, July, from July 31st to, like, October the 8th. I did somewhere, like, around... 48 or 49 clinics in that stretch it was it was men in china <laughs> so I, I i you know i was in um i was in wuhan man you know i was in wuhan and i was in a i was uh at a restaurant a mexican restaurant in wuhan bad idea uh <laughs> bad idea and, you know it's just crazy man you know some of the experiences that you see like you know, I was looking up at the, the ceiling aqueduct and seeing three rats chasing each other, man. And I'm like, okay, yeah, so we got to get out of here, right? Because, you know, you know, the spider 
is bad, but the rat, not so bad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, well, where I come from, the rat is bad. So I'm yeah. out this bug, man. I don't know what yeah. else. It's crazy, though, man. But it was great. It was great. You know, the people, when they know you, they, they respect you. Mm-hmm. You know, um, my wife came over there. Uh, they was they was calling me master. She was like, "Who this this old big head <laughs> dude? You talking calling him master?" I'm like, yeah, that's me. <laughs> you know? But you know, they call you master and they respect you. But I think one of my clinics, man, it was it was it was, it was, it was when I say it was complete culture shock. I was the only one on the stage, mm-hmm. and there was like somewhere like around five thousand people out. You know, and I was in the middle of the stage playing drums in China. It's crazy. Right. That's what I'm saying, man. Like, I I got a chance to witness that with you, man. Like, yeah, man. And um, so drummers, it may not have to be a church gig. It may not have to be club dates. It may not have to be chasing that R&B artist or pop gig. You could be so nice and so unique at what you do that people mm-hmm. want to learn your style and they will they will solicit you to come to their country and and, and Indeed. Con- or continent and just you on drums yeah or, or bass yeah. whatever it is and you you're, you're yeah, such man. a virtuoso that it's just you on that instrument and they're there to just hear you cheer for you that that's it I mean, and, and to me, when you put that hard work as a musician, I mean, it's great to be on albums. And, and, and again, yeah. that's part of what I'm showing with this, with this, um, this particular show. Two extraordinary drummers who, yeah. get, who command superior respect in their own right yeah. and took different highways getting there. As crazy as it sounds, a lot of, you know, this generation is or is or was stuck on going to the bigger cities and, you know, trying to get on a big gig, big pop gig. And I mean, quite naturally, you need that experience. But um, there's so many different more facets, man, to to doing this thing, you know, because now, you know, where is the pop gig? Where is the R&B gig? You know what I mean? Whereas in, you know, my symbols are still selling in China. You know what I mean? Right. So it's it's... You know, it's it, you got to learn how to find your thing that works for you. And a lot of times it's not going to be your name and lights. It's just not. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Success. Let me say this. Success is not always having the big gig. Success, being successful is being able to have a, a good church gig and being able to go home and have two gigs at, you know, in the city that pays you way more. Then that road gig can pay you. That's that's success, man. Right, right, right. You know, yeah. right. Do whatever you need to do, and kind of make it work for you is so much more better mm-hmm. than following the crowd. Right. I make a point to not follow the crowd. What's next for Dre Energy? Um, you know, I'm just great to, you know, just get in my own space right now. I'm going to take this kit that I have in my garage and. Uh, put it somewhere and start doing a whole lot of recording and all yeah. that kind of stuff, man. Just kind of just, you know, I, I, I teach, I still teach uh, virtually uh, a bunch of kids in China. So I still do that on a, on a weekly, monthly basis. Wow. So that's, that's for the most part, that's what I'm doing, trying to get back out to London, trying to get back out to Russia, mm-hmm. trying to get back out to all these different places, uh, Korea. So uh, let me say this about Korea, man. Uh, Korea has some of the most talented individuals in the world, man. Seriously, like they, 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 they are they are super talented. I went and did a, um, I went and did this uh, clinic at the school called Soul Music High School, wow. and everybody in the school is handpicked, and everybody is super amazing. One of the little guys that was there. Uh, he was his, instead of going to bed at night, his mom would let him go to his practice room and practice from like 11 at night to about seven or eight in the morning. What? And he knew how to play all the day vocal stuff like lick for lick, man. Crazy. And I, and I always say this, man, and, and, and I've, I've, I've lost some things for music 
and I've gained some things for music, you know, but I've always been down for the cause for music, period, no matter what. I didn't, I didn't care what it took. I didn't care what I had to go through. I was going to uh, do whatever I could to make sure I stayed in music at all costs. And it's, it works for me. Right. It didn't always work for me. I got to be honest. It didn't always work for me. And I've lost a ton of things, but I've also gained a lot of things, too. Yo, Dre Energy, y'all, y'all need to follow him. Chris, he's on IG. He's on, you on Facebook too? Because I'm not really big on Facebook, but I'm on uh, I'm not, I mean, I am, man. But I, I think I check my Facebook like once a week, man. So, I mean, you can go on the Facebook if you want to, but the, the real thing is Instagram for yeah, me. Yeah, so. and, and the real thing is Instagram for him. Y'all, y'all will see about 70,000 people that already are <laughs> very much aware of him if you weren't. <laughs> so, it's all to the good, man. And, and it's all good. Numbers, man. Love you, brother. You know, Love you too, man. And we'll be in touch, okay? What's up, man? I'll see you soon, bro. Okay, man. Right, man. Peace out, brother. Thank you, everybody, for listening. I'm in town on TV.